Hi fellow traders, I hope everybody had a great day today. We had another Tuesday in the books. I was kind of hoping and looking for another day like yesterday um, where it surprised me, but today actually turned out the way I thought Monday would be. So I guess these days got got flip-flopped. But, you know, not a not a bad day, but then nothing really to write home about. You know, some good good lessons that we were able to um, cover in chat. And, you know, that's always a good thing. Uh, just want to remind you guys, I am bringing back um, Sneak Peek Wednesday. I know some of you remember that from, I guess, a little over a year ago. Um, so we're going to do this for a little bit. I know the recordings that I have on YouTube are over a year old, so it's time to get some new ones put up. So we'll do the sneak peek Wednesday um, for a couple of weeks so you guys can come in and check out uh, what we're doing in the community. So tomorrow, we'll start about 8.30 and that's when I start building my watch list. And I'll just live stream through to like 10.30 or 11. Or if it's just dead and there's just nothing, you know, I'll cut it off early. You know, no need to sit here when the market is dead. That's one of the worst things you can do. Because the longer you sit there, the more of a chance that you're going to take a trade that you shouldn't take and end up giving money back to the market. So just join me on YouTube tomorrow morning about 8.30 and I should be getting it cranked up then. Um, well, before we get into that, you guys know the first thing I looked at this morning, of course, was going to be Tesla. Um, we've been killing this the last two weeks. And today I was looking at the same thing and I was pretty excited because, you know, here's the pop this morning. You know, I put in the high up here and then we pulled back. We tried to make a new high and we started selling off under the, um, the moving averages, just like I like to see it. But this morning, this thing started, you know, about 7.15. I was already gone. Well, after 7.15, I was already gone taking my son to school. So I missed this move here. Um, normally, I could get in around just after 7. Um, but it wasn't set up then. By the time it set up, I was gone. So I missed this move. But when I came back, you know, I was pretty excited because it sold off right to around this 250, 250 level that I would have been looking for. And it bounced off of that, uh, pushed back up. And so, you know, I was saying in chat when I got back, I was just, I was looking for this to see if we were going to, you know, reject. And yeah, I could have anticipated this based on what this thing has done a couple days prior. But when the market is not really good, you know, it's not 100% back yet, I'm not going to anticipate. I'm going to try and wait for the confirmation, wait for the setup to mature, and then take it. And you can see why. This never did um, mature. It was trying to reject here, but it was being held up here by the 20. And it just drove it on up. And you can see we got the the um the push up and it just kind of ran up all day. Um so you know maybe dead. I'll look at it tomorrow. But if we get another day tomorrow like this, then you know I probably won't be looking at it unless I catch some news or something on it. But the ATM was closed today. Um, we'll see if it's going to be open tomorrow, but um, no Tesla today. 
would have been a good long, but I just didn't see it that way. Um, so this morning, um, SQ was on our watch. We didn't have any earnings watches. Everything that we were watching had kind of a sketchy catalyst, not the best of of catalysts from for you know the opening range trades, but the stocks were you know putting in some decent price action. So here's you know SQ I felt would give me the strongest move. And you can see we were selling off and this this is the 50 from the daily the daily chart. You know it kind of bounced here. It tried to push up and it came back down. It made a higher low. And then we opened and we opened strong. And here's the five minute opening range high right here. Now the pre-market high was, you know, all the way back here. And whenever the pre-market high is above the opening range high, I'm not going to take this out of the gate. You know, I probably, I could have jumped in it as soon as this broke the um, five minute opening range high. And this was a nice move. I would have been able to take some profit on this. But whenever it's below, I'm going to wait. And I sat back and I waited. This pushed up. Waited for the pullback. And again, I waited until we got back over this level. Got back over red to green. You know, got back green. So I got in. And I felt pretty good about it because we held red to green here but look at the the wicks on top this is a sign of weakness here and you know these are the weakest of the green candles because it starts out all red at one point i mean all green at one point and then it in it closes weak and this closed weak and the next candle open it tried to push up a little bit and then it just completely sold off and you know once we got below this i you know now technically we still had all the support down here you know a lot of times when we're sh when we're shorting it runs up into the 20 and rejects we're going long this ran down into the 20 and tapped the 50 here and it bounced so this was a case of being in a small account, not being able to give it enough room to work. If you look at the range on these candles, you can see a point, giving it a point room is not, more than likely is not going to work if you get a pullback. Um, had I not gotten a pullback, a point I feel would have been fine. But we get a pullback, it's just not enough. Here we bounce and we make it to my first target. My first target over here was gonna be the 200 and on the five minute chart, which is this white line and the 20 from the daily. Um, that was gonna be my first target. And here we ended up hitting it, but after it stopped me out. You know, this is one of the biggest issues that we face and you know trading a small account and this is one of the reasons why you know i firmly believe and and yeah i may have some bias in this is that if you are starting out and you're trading in a small account the worst thing you can do is follow somebody that's trading 10 times 20 times more than what you're trading because your risk reward is not going to be right. The problems that you run into in a small account, that person is not going to run into. So you're going to have problems and issues that you can't deal with. You don't understand. And if you never get through that, then you'll never grow your account. And you'll never be able to follow somebody like that. You know, so 
that's why I always advocate if you're going to trade in a small account, you need to follow somebody. And that's why, you know, I kind of shared that this, this weekend in the Rolling With Ed video. The reason why I do this, the reason why I stream this small account live so that whatever issues we deal with, when things like this come up, a real good teachable moment, you can see it happen live. And it can translate into your learning. It's, it's easier for you to see it happen versus me sit here and try to tell you or record it and do a voiceover. Watching it happen and watching how we deal with it, um, I think is priceless. All right, so that was a deal on SQ. Let's take a look at um, AA. Um, this was a decent trade. Now this was, was still on my, um, it was still on my charts from yesterday. And so I did see it, you know, at the open, we had this nice sell off and we were still under the 52 week low, the previous 52 week low. So we were making and continuing to make 52 week lows. So I waited for it to retest. And, you know, I got in as soon as I got in, once it broke the low, it tried to push back, but the two, the 20 held ended up selling off and I was able to take a piece off here. And I was waiting for it to continue lower. But once it recovered, you know, I went ahead and took it off and I was going to wait for the next opportunity to get in, but the price action just wasn't there. You know, it, it just didn't seem like it was going to be, um, a trade that was just going to give me a big move and it didn't, you know, but it was a green trade. And, you know, I feel that we managed it as best as we could. Um, even though, you know, we did get down to, you know, 3770, you know, that would have been some extra if I'd have just let it hang on and hang on because it never did get back to break even. It never would have stopped me out, you know, but I just wasn't feeling it. Um, and sometimes you have to make those decisions. If you're not feeling it, then, you know, let it go. And PPG, now this was another one, you know, we were selling off pretty good. And I wanted to wait for a bounce, but the, as weak as this thing was looking, I was like, okay, once we get under this this um, support here, I want to take it. I could still use the VWAP as a guide if I had to, but I like to get in with some resistance above me. And, you know, this made me feel a little bit more confident. And we get down to this 99.54 level. I was able to take half off here. Um, this was a perfect spot because this was the next level of support. And then after that, we had this huge window. So I know I was only in 100 shares, but in a couple of weeks, I'll be able to take 200 shares of this. So what we need to do is, you know, our main job as day traders is to pay ourselves. And, you know, there are different schools of thought. You have some people that will hold it and say, I'm going to hold it until it hits my target. You have others that are going to take profit along the way at, you know, strategic points. And for me, it's going to be level when we hit a significant support level that I identified on the daily chart. And you can see this one is significant. Um... You can see where we came back later on in the day and this rejected almost three times. You know, it did pop 
at the end of the day on some news, but you know, here throughout the day, you could you could see this was a significant level. So it was smart to take um, profit here. And then I decided, okay, this is a pretty nice move. I could split 50 shares up, 25 and 25, and it would make sense. You know, because we have a, a large enough move where the commissions wouldn't even matter in this case. So that was the reason why I split this. Plus, if I was trading with 200 shares, this would be 100 here, then 50 and 50. You know, so at this point, when you're growing your account and you're developing your skill, when you're new, it's, it's about developing skill. You want to focus on that more so than maximizing your profit. Because if you don't develop the skill, you'll never maximize the profit. So the skill has to come first, the profit next. So practicing scaling out, even with smaller size, even with 100 shares makes sense. Because you are trying to put yourself in, in a you know, a position to where you will um, have that skill. So when you are trading with larger size, scaling out is just a natural thing. You already have your plans in place. You already know, you know, how to identify spots where you're going to scale out. And it just makes sense to you. So later on, I waited for this, you know, once it failed twice, I felt confident getting in under the 20 and what do you know it went back and tried to test it a third time and it it just didn't sell off like i had anticipated and you know just ended up taking it all off here i don't know what happened um you know why it filled and then five cents later another one filled a minute later i don't i don't even know this was on autopilot and, you know, I was driving at the time, so I, I really don't know how this happened. I guess it split like this. It, it wasn't, this was only one ticket, though. It was only one ticket. It just got split somehow. But it was a market. You know, I do put in, I mean, it wasn't a market order. It was a limit order. So that's why I don't understand how that happened. But it was at, the limit order was at 60. And it filled at 56 and then 61. But that's fine, it's a better, it was a better fill, so not gonna cry about that. But um, another okay trade, you know, this was green. Um, and you know, I, you can add up how much money you make on these. I try and I don't look at the P and L anymore. I don't care. I look at it at the end of the week, just like I showed you last yesterday. So it didn't matter to me what this was, but I can tell, you know, I can add it up in my head, you know, and tell this was a pretty good uh, trade for a small account only trading 100 shares um, so that was uh, my day um, nothing to write home about we didn't get a big trade off today like we have been in the last couple of days but that's fine um, just remember tomorrow we are doing the live stream you know, feel free to come in. If you're not a member, check me out on YouTube. And, you know, I'll, as long as the, the network is working right, the Internet's working right, you know, it's going to it's going to be fine. You know, we are expecting some inclement weather at some point. Um, thanks to Michael, but. You know, that shouldn't affect us in the morning. All right, guys, so. You guys take it easy. Have a great night.
and I will see you first thing in the morning.